Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. Today's episode is sponsored and brought to you by Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest. Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest is an immersive action RPG focused on fast paced and flash missions, character growth, and real time guild battles. In addition to being a great game for killing some fragments of time as you play on the go anytime, anywhere, it presents a fun take on what you and your friends could do in the interconnected multiverse of heroes, all connected by Mirror City. And you all know me, I'm gonna roll heavy as a big beefy warrior class, but players also have the choice to play as a gunslinger, assassin, and mage all of which have their own natural class perks and bonuses. And beyond that, players can then dive into unique equipment systems, spirits, wings, and companions to customize their playstyle as they quickly level up. Which, if anyone's asking me, I would like to be seen as the fiery bringer of death whenever I can swoop into battle. So that's me, and I'm down for that. Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest offers exciting PvP for solo and group games. There's a single player campaign and there's also various bounties allowing players to hack and slash through hordes and bosses in different worlds or the chance to enjoy much more epic 3d visuals across the multiplayer verse with battle royale 5v5 and 10v10 battle options you can team up with your friends or go alone the question really is how will your warrior fare in the multiverse plus if you register right now there are in-game rewards that everyone can win check the link in the box down below and spin their lucky win for a chance to win a cool real world prize including a brand new iPhone 13 Pro Max. You can use my link in the box below to register through the App Store or Google Play, and you too can embark on your journey through the darkness. Once again, thank you so much to our sponsor, Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest, available right now. Use the code on screen or in the link down below. Thanks for watching, and hey, enjoy the show. The year was 2021, and Insomniac Games was standing tall with the release of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Not only did it sell incredibly well, but it was praised for its addicting gameplay and absolutely gorgeous graphics. And some people would even say that it was the best game yet to come out on the PlayStation 5. If you ask people today, they'd probably tell you that Rift Apart is the best of the Ratchet & Clank franchise that's had to offer thus far. But personally, I'd have to disagree. For me, to really find the best, you'd have to go all the way back almost 18 years ago towards the end of the PlayStation 2's life cycle and look at Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal. Not only did that game firmly establish both Ratchet & Clank as the premier PlayStation icons, but it cemented Insomniac Games as one of the best developers on the planet. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. After my experiences with the four games in the Ratchet & Clank series, I have come to love this duo and the consistent quality that comes with these games. But in doing my research about Up Your Arsenal, I learned that not only is this arguably one of the best Ratchet & Clank games out there, it's probably the most important game in Insomniac Games' development history. So. Hold on to your arsenal, because we're completing this bad boy today. All right, let's do this. Oh my God, Ted, yeah. why are you naked? You're going commando. I'm going commando. Why? No, we're we're completing Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal, not Ratchet and Clank going commando. Mm. What are you doing now? Uh, I'm looking for stuff to, you know, put up my... Uh... No! Yes! Insomniac Games is currently most well known for their Spider-Man titles and Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which have all been hugely popular. But despite releasing some of the best games in just the past few years, Insomniac has maintained a reputation as an excellent company 
that almost never engages in crunch culture. And that's in large part because of Up Your Arsenal. So during the development of Ratchet & Clank going commando, Insomniac Games promised that it would be 150% bigger than the original Ratchet & Clank with larger maps, better weapons, and tighter gameplay. And they delivered, creating one of the most beloved games released on the PS2. And it took a lot out of the people working on the title. So it was crazy when they planned to make a third game even bigger than that. Development for Up Your Arsenal began before Going Commando was even released, and Insomniac wanted it to be the best game they had to offer. So they put together the biggest team they've had yet in order to get all the new stuff done on time, including a writer to actually come up with the story and animators for cutscenes. Something that amazingly was not the norm at the time. However, even with more bodies, the development team had bitten off a lot more than they could chew. And this was due to the fact that Up Your Arsenal was also going to have online multiplayer on top of a more robust single player campaign. Essentially, they were making two games instead of one. But not only that, some people were also pulled away to work on Resistance, a first person shooter slated to come out on the not yet released PS3. So developers were being sent left and right to work on different parts of the same project or different projects altogether. When it came to keep a schedule, there was a major lack of focus. This meant that in order to get everything done by the release date, the developers had to crunch hardcore. Everyone was working 80 to 100 hour work weeks as opposed to the standard American 40 hour work week in order to get everything done on time. And because of this, Insomniac had to make a lot of calls regarding what stayed in the game and what didn't. Previous Ratchet & Clank staples like space battles and racing sections were cut so that Up Your Arsenal could be on time. This also affected the way the whole game felt, removing the branching level design and focusing more on the combat. This turned out well for Insomniac because not only did the game actually release earlier than expected, it became their highest rated and best selling game yet. It held its own against such juggernaut PS2 titles like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Metal Gear Solid 3, and Fight Club the video game. And to this day is still one of their most well received games according to Metacritic. Yes, better than Spider-Man and Rift Apart. However, crunch does have its effects. A lot of people brought on to work on Up Your Arsenal were brand new developers fresh out of college and were huge fans of Ratchet & Clank, according to veteran developers at Insomniac. But this level of crunch proved to be a lot for the newer developers, and as a result, a lot of them left the video game industry completely. And you know what? I totally get why. Doing that much work in such a short amount of time is draining. Just look at what's been happening over at Naughty Dog. Yes, their games are incredible, but 70% of the designers who worked on Uncharted 4 are no longer with the company. That's a problem, and I wouldn't be surprised to hear that that's been the case for each of their games. Plus, it is a proven fact that when you take your time and take care of yourself, not only do you feel better, but the product turns out better as well. And Insomniac agreed. Insomniac realized that this kind of pace was impossible to keep up for any long span of time. And because of the development process of Up Your Arsenal, Insomniac began to completely change their company culture when it came to finishing a game, although it took some time. Nowadays, they're treating their employees like people instead of cogs in the machine. And really, every company out there should do that. Honestly, there is a lot more that goes into this that I couldn't even get into because this video is about completing up your arsenal and not a two hour deep dive retrospective on how to make a video game. However, if you do want to watch a two hour deep dive retrospective, I have to recommend this video by The Golden Bolt as well as their Ratchet and Clank based videos. It's fascinating and it's where I got most of my info in this background section. So, hey, thank you so much Golden Bolt. Great work to you. I mentioned earlier that Up Your Arsenal is the most critically well-received game that Insomniac has ever released according to Metacritic. So does it deserve that amount of praise? Well, in my opinion, hell yeah. Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal does what most video game sequels should do, take the great foundation that they were given and build on it. Going Commando did this by refining the run and gun combat while keeping the comedic tone of the original. Up Your Arsenal builds off of Commando by leaving the perfect gameplay largely unchanged and adding a truly engaging story. Not to say that the stories were bad before, far from it, but everything just seems to work even better here. And I guess that's what hiring a designated writer will do. The game starts with Ratchet and Clank playing space chess and watching a new episode of Secret Agent Clank. After Ratchet angrily changes the channel, 
they learn that Ratchet's home planet of Veldin is under attack by Tyranoids. The duo quickly head to Veldin and help the Galactic Rangers defeat the Tyranoid menace and rescue the president. He tells you that this attack is led by Dr. Nefarious, a robotic mad scientist that wants to destroy all natural life, aka Squishies. The president then tasks Ratchet and Clank to find and aid the only person who's ever defeated Dr. Nefarious, Captain Quark. That's right, Quark is in charge, which means that Ratchet and Clank will have to do all of the actual work, platforming and shooting their way across 18 different planets to defeat the evil doctor. So what is it that makes this game's story so much better than the previous two? Well, first off, it's a funnier one. There were genuinely moments that made me audibly laugh, and that's tough to do for a game that came out on the PS2. For example, Quark apologizing to his monkey friend for what happened during mating season, and the fact that Dr. Nefarious has a giant laser cannon called the BFG. Speaking of Quark and Nefarious, the characters are much more interesting. The side characters like Big Al and Skid McMarks get a bit more screen time, letting their personalities really shine. And as a villain, Dr. Nefarious, as always, is fantastic. He's the classic overreacting megalomaniac that actually seems dangerous. Which brings me to the best character in the entire game, Captain Quark. Quark is as hilarious as ever with his delightful combination of ego and cowardice. But in Up Here Arsenal, I actually connected with him. And that's because the original Ratchet and Clank trilogy isn't about Ratchet and Clank, it's about Captain Quark. Back when I was studying theater, I was taught that the protagonist wasn't necessarily the main character of a play, but rather the character that goes through the most change in the play. So for example, uh, if we're talking about film, in The Godfather, the main character is Vito Corleone. But the protagonist is his son, Michael, because he goes through the most change. Or, in The Godfather Part 2, the main character was Michael Corleone, but the protagonist, ironically, was Vito Corleone, since he goes through the most change. Or, in The Godfather 3, I was the protagonist because I changed. I changed the channel. The movie's not bad, but it's not great either. Quark clearly goes through the most change throughout all three games. In the first game, we see Captain Quark start out as the galaxy's most popular superhero. Then it's revealed that he's actually being paid by the main antagonist to not interfere with his plans. In Going Commando, it's revealed that Quark is the main antagonist and is responsible for the evil protopet. Finally, in Up Your Arsenal, he actually gets the chance to prove himself. We recover him from the jungle, remind him who he is, and he leads the team to defeat Nefarious. And he immediately runs away as soon as things get difficult. This leads to more hilarious moments, but also gives Quark a chance to prove that he's the hero he always said he was when he decides to come back and take Nefarious head on. We also get a lot more backstory for Quark with the five different bid comic levels. These are 2D side-scroller levels, a la similar to Mega Man, Mega Man X-ish, that explore the past adventures of Captain Quark. Not only are they really fun, but they show us Quark's previous adventures, including his first bout with Dr. Nefarious. Plus, they do serve as a great break from the regular gameplay, especially since we're missing all the extra maxi games that we're used to here. All of this stuff I just described makes Up Your Arsenal stand out from every other Ratchet & Clank game. Yes, Rift Apart is more emotional, but up Your Arsenal keeps you engaged with the top-notch script and a comic relief character that became the most intriguing part of the franchise. This was all because Insomniac Games had a fantastic gameplay foundation to build upon. Going Commando managed to create a fantastic balance of fun platforming sections and exciting firefights while adding some other gameplay if you needed a break. Because of the time constraints during development I mentioned earlier, a lot of these were cut for levels with less platforming, less exploration, and less variety. And you know what? For once, I think the game is better off for it. Not that there was anything wrong with branching pathways for Going Commando. I completely understand if you think that's what makes for a better game. You're not wrong. However, when it comes to completing up your arsenal, I'm glad they focused more on the combat than the platforming. That's because the main crux of completion is the weapons. There are a total of 20 weapons in Up Your Arsenal, including some of the weapons that return from Going Commando, like the Bouncer, and an improved Lava Gun. And just like in Going Commando, we're going to have to level them all up too. However, instead of just having a single leveled up form, each weapon has five levels that you can unlock in the initial playthrough. Although once you start challenge mode, essentially a new game plus, every weapon gets a purchasable upgrade that lets you get them up to level eight. Every weapon except the Rhino, that is. That's only available in challenge mode and has five levels. Okay, so that's 20 weapons that you have to upgrade. The total of 157 levels. 
How do we do that? Well, by playing the game, of course. Each weapon gets more powerful with each enemy they've killed, and since all the stages are more focused on gun battles, it becomes a lot easier to level these weapons. There are essentially three kinds of stages. The main planets that are similar to the previous games, Annihilation Nation, and Space Ranger missions. Annihilation Nation is the planet where all of the gladiator battles take place. These are split into two different types, obstacle courses that are more based on platforming, and arena battles that are about killing everyone in front of you. And both are very fun and a great way to earn bolts, the main currency in the game. The Space Ranger missions are levels with multiple objectives that you have to tackle in a small area. But they all essentially boil down to killing everyone in front of you. What makes them stand out is that these maps are actually the multiplayer maps from the online mode. Unfortunately, as you all know, the servers are down, so this is the closest thing I've got the experience of the multiplayer. Now, none of these are too different from each other, but they are just unique enough to make each one feel fresh. If you really miss that feeling of exploration and discovery, there are still a ton of collectibles hiding about. First, there are the regular bolts. These are used for any of the regular purchases made throughout Up Your Arsenal, not to mention the trophy for getting 10 million bolts since we are playing this on the PS3. In total, you have to earn at least 24,074,000 bolts to purchase everything in the game. Now this was made much easier by the shield charge weapon and the bolt multiplier that takes effect in challenge mode. Then there are the 40 titanium bolts which replace the platinum bolts from Going Commando that replace the gold bolts from Ratchet & Clank 1. These are all found by going off the beaten path and exploring each of the levels. Instead of being used for weapon mod, the titanium bolts are a currency for different skins, like a sumo wrestler or a cool ninja robot. Third, we've got the 30 skill points that are earned by figuring out random tasks like speed running the vid comics or shooting ships on certain planets. These are always fun to figure out and unlock a ton of great cheats that make replaying the game in challenge mode feel even more fun. And finally, we've got something new, trophies. And no, I'm not talking about PlayStation trophies. There are 15 figurines that are either hidden on a planet or earned by fully completing a part of the game like the Annihilation Nation battles or fully upgrading your health. These are very cute to look at but are most important for unlocking the completion bonus at the very end. Going Commando had one of the best completion bonuses of all time with the Insomniac Museum, a level designed like the Insomniac office in Burbank where you could see things that didn't quite make the game. And I'm glad to say that Up Your Arsenal does the exact same thing, and you know what? It's still freaking great. If you collect all the trophies in the game, a teleporter will activate in your quarters that takes you straight to the museum. Obviously, almost everything in the museum is completely different from the previous one, and there are some great highlights. You can try out some extremely difficult hacker mini games and even create some of your own. Also, there is one of the racing levels that didn't make it into the full game, and you can see why, because it is not finished. But it doesn't stop there, because with the addition of cheat codes, you can participate in a few more silly shenanigans. Yeah, Ratchet's Wrench is pretty cool and all, but do you know what's even cooler? A double-bladed lightsaber. How on earth can you top that? Oh, I don't know. How about holding a lightsaber while being a monkey? I wish I found out about this sooner because I would have easily played this whole game as an ape escape ape with a lightsaber. It's very easy for me to see why so many people say that Up Your Arsenal is the best game in the Ratchet & Clank franchise. Although there is a lot less platforming than the previous two entries, I don't mind it. It makes the completion process more streamlined while also feeling just as rewarding. The combat is a blast, pun intended, and the story is the right amount of silly and fun. Add on another great completion bonus and you have a game that is easily worth the 25 hours it took to complete. Playing up your arsenal and learning about its history made me really appreciate Insomniac games and how much they've grown over the years. It's very clear that they love video games and they want to keep improving their games and themselves. Every title has only gotten bigger and better and the catalyst for all of that change was the game right here, Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal. Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal is funny, addicting, and possibly the most fun you'll have with a 3D platformer on the PlayStation 2. And that's saying a lot because I have my favorites. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Complete It. Complete It!